And good morning, live with Dr. JJ, broadcasting live from the manor. Here we have people here in person, also online. And as we gather for worship, we honor and thank the Huron Wendat Nation, the Metis Nation of Ontario, Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners and traditional inhabitants of the lands of the City of Toronto. Region of Hamilton, Durham region, and surrounding areas. May we extend the, the vine of healing to bring the wonder and connect with the heartbeat of the season. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. 
Special welcome to all those who are here this morning. Is that a Lydia Nicholas? All right. We're a, pr a prelude for next week in the baptism. Yay. That's good to break him in. Live, live worship. Okay, okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Lots of great toys. So, yeah, it's a good to see people in person. We've been seeing online for ages and ages and then some. And then take note, that's our, our team that went to Harry Potter. There was uh, 10 of us, and then it was, uh, we, we navigated the cities of Toronto, five detours, and even though it's a 10 minute drive, I think by, by the time, it, we actually didn't miss the show, it was a miracle. So there we go, it was a, a delightful day. And also, all the back, 400 back cliff, back cliffs, backpacks have been packed for Thorncliffe, wonderful. Thank you to all who made donations and to the team of the uh, North Toronto churches who made a difference for people. Again, 400 people of uh, young, young children, older children, young youth, older youth, making change and transformation as people get ready to go back to school. And yes, remember a vegetable patch at the manor. There's a, a Susan, thank you, Susan Logie, who thinned out the vegetables. That's good. And uh, remember, we're going to be having acorns come, acorn, acorn squash. And there's tomatoes trying to turn green. They do. The corn has been picked. I noticed someone noticed that it was ripe. And I think Betty wants to come and make an announcement. Come on, Betty. Hi, Susan Russell. And remember, information night, that's the information night. It's the Monday, last Monday in September. Yes, for a Syrian refugee family that we're going to sponsor. And Betty Kalman has a, has a few wonderful announcements to make. Okay, I'm back. The move is done. Um, all right. I would like to first of all apologize to those whose birthday I missed. I missed some important ones at the end of July and in August. So I'm going to list some people here and wish them a happy birthday as a group in August. We did wish Reverend JJ his happy birthday last week. Here in Portland, we remember you. Uh, so May Chong, uh, Cole Sadler, Sean Morris, Carol Foley, Bob Gill, Neil Jacoby, and a young lady who is in the congregation today, who we missed in late July. We would wish to uh, extend our celebration to Edna. Edna turned 96, I think, on July 26, and I think that entitles her to a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Edna. Happy birthday to you. Now, also for celebration, um, Reverend JJ has mentioned his husband Bill Hawkins is completing his 41st year of sobriety tomorrow. A grand anniversary. <laughs> Lots of anniversaries in August. Lots, lots of anniversaries. Lots of anniversaries. Yes. Lots of anniversaries. On another note, uh, a little bit of a, uh, well, not a sadder note, and no, we also celebrate the life of Hans Mueller. Uh, Hans was in his 90s. He did attend Manor Road United Church for some years, and Don has uh, informed us that Hans Mueller passed away. Um, so we extend our sympathies to his family, and uh, we celebrate his, his life. Uh, his um, actual formal service will be through Humphreys, uh, and there is going to be news about it about that later, so we'll keep you posted. And I think many of you probably remember Hans. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Horst, Horst Mueller, I'm doing it wrong. Yes, Don. Yeah, he was also a trustee. He was also a trustee, so let me amend that it was Horst Mueller. Maybe I'm not completely back yet. The move has added my head, but, but we'll get there. Uh, normally, um, uh, we say the world prayers as well at this time. And I will continue with those. Uh, we continue to pray for those places at war and with distress and violence. Also good news this morning on the news that Salman Rushdie is off the ventilator. You may have read that he was attacked um, and uh, apparently he's talking. So that is good news to hear that. Um, additionally, um, I have to say that I enjoyed a great concert at the Mount Pleasant Cemetery last night. I know that sounds strange, but they do the Saturday concerts every 
Saturday in the summer from five to six. And last night, I thought, talk about uplifting. We hear about war, we hear about violence, we hear about the world not coming together. But last night, a group played, their name is Zuni, and they represent 11 musical traditions from around the world. Wow. And their music is a blend of those traditions. And last night, it included music from Brazil, Canada, Iran, uh, Greece, you name it. <laughs> Beautiful concert. There's another one coming up this uh, Saturday, but it'll be more music of Bach to the Bee Gees. So you, you gather that. Bach to the Bee Gees. Yeah, okay. they've got Edith Piaf, you name it. But that may be a rare something else because their music, the Zuni music, appreciated the world. And they sang songs to honor the earth and to preserve the earth and songs to recognize the value of water within the earth. And it was just a blend of appreciation of our world and the music. And their name actually in Esperanto means together, Zuni. But there's Jennifer at the back. And she is doing a project which honors the world earth too. She gathers up various objects and those in the congregation will see it. Um, and she makes the most beautiful cards that are here for sale today. And all of the money raised through this will be going to help the Syrian family that we're looking into. Now, additionally, Jennifer is offering a workshop, which is going to be, I nearly said January, but it's September 23rd, uh, with registration due by the 19th. And she is going to show participants how they can use objects that they gather and create their own cards. Now, I understand the registration fee will include some of the materials that people need to work with. Uh, could they bring something they value, like a leaf or, or a snail shell like you have, or so on? So consider that uh, September 23rd, registration by the 19th, and it will be here at the church proper yes. uh, to learn how to make those cards and become creative. And uh, I think on that happy note, I will end the congregation before. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, but well, we continue on with our announcements. We move our slides forward. Oh, also, this is Donovan's last Sunday. Donovan back. I mean, he just came and left so quickly, a bit like most of our lives these days. And but Donovan, I know you're, you're playing the service, but it's been an honor to have you here with us. Thank you, Donovan. The next slide. I have, I have moments in my life. I okay. Good. Remember the pantry, it's a, it's a bit bare right now. So we need some more soup and other things and keep coming. Okay, next one. Good. And now we have our call to worship. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Mindful of the gifts we receive and confident in the sustenance the Lord provides, let, let us worship God. God. in French, Jésus, je voudrais, je chantais sur ma route. That's enough for today. And then, before I forget too, Ruben uh, is going back to school, journalism he's taking in the, in the fall, but he's going to be living in residence. So we unfortunately wasn't able to be here today that a bout of food poisoning hit him, but we have Matthew Coins who's been attending for three years, who's, who stepped in as, and said, welcome Matthew. All right. Matthew studies film, he's done writing, he's done background, so he's a natural for this. And, and the beauty is right now, all you have to do is make sure things are muted. Yay. We're eventually going to have Cecil B. DeMille. No, we're not going to have Cecil B. DeMille. Let's continue to gather our thoughts and our prayers.
God be with you. God of peace. Your call at times appears to divide us from one another. Help us to overcome our fears and to respond in courage. Give us faith to trust the unity that is beyond our sight. Give us your eyes to recognize the signs before us. Ask this in the confidence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Come to the moment of lighting the candle. A little drop, drop, drop. Someone didn't mute. Just remember to mute. It's very important. Okay. And we say, let there be light. And may the angels of light glisten for us this day. May the spark of God's beauty dance in the eyes of those we love, and may the universe be on fire with presence for us this day. May the new sun's rising grace us with gratitude, let earth's greenness shine, and the waters be still. Let heaven's wind stir in the soul of our soul, and she wait for us within us. Amen. God of hope, we confess our disregard of your care, our doubt of your providence, our blindness to signs of your love. We are afraid to risk our comforts to find new life. We separate ourselves from you and from others and foster division between those we love. Help us to amend our lives and make us your faithful people who bear the good fruit of your word in the world. Through Christ. Amen. God hears our confession, rejoicing as we desire amendments of life. God blesses us from our despondency to rejoice in the company of the saints. God acknowledges the forces that separate us and brings us to peace. Rejoice in the knowledge of our reconciliation and the life lived in the presence of God. And the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please extend the peace of Christ. Peace, everyone. And we come to that delightful time in the universe where we remember that we're all children at every age of our lives. Okay, let's look at the next slide. Now in 2018, we went to South Africa. And actually this is a real picture that I took. I didn't just get it off the internet. And yes, the lion was about right there. And it was nighttime. We were on one of these nighttime things. And uh, yes, we were about 10 of us in the Jeep. And there was no barricades. It was the G, it was it was a lion and us and for some reason we were not terrified the lion was not tamed the lion ate what lions do and it was quite quite wonderful there seemed to be a respect though i'm thinking it's much more me thinking the lion understood what needed to know i'm sure the lion was just saying you're here again I'm, I'm i'm just having a quiet night but it's amazing and wonderful to be part of creation and celebrate this uh, massive world we live in, not only for lions, but everything around us. And actually this week I saw, you know, raccoons 
our new breed this, this, this year. I've noticed a raccoon midday at four o'clock in the middle of the road, there was a bike, a cyclist coming at it. Normally a raccoon would run away. Raccoon stood up on its hind legs and said, bring it on. And the person had to turn, make, make a detour. Raccoons don't normally do that. So whose world is it anyways? Well, I think they're reminding us. There we go. This is the next slide. Okay. And this is reminding us that yes, this is a very large version, I think of a hornet or a wasp. And as much as they're tiny, uh, they have a lot of power, don't they? As we, as we gather outside for picnics and reminded that yes, they are preparing for their winter rest and making nests. And, uh, and as much as we think they're just a nuisance, we know that if they bite, it's not very pleasant, but we're reminded of the great creatures that are part of all our creation, especially the wasps and the hornets. Let's slide forward. And this is reminding us of the more gentler aspects of creation, the, the doe and the deer and the female deer, no, no, sorry, and this is a, little, a, a deer and it's lovely little, uh, did you say deerlings? I can never remember, what's, what's the name of it? Fawn, there you go. I knew there was a word for this, so there was two. Okay, so we celebrate the gifts of all creation. And we say now in our prayer of illumination, God of wisdom, we eagerly seek your presence in our lives and in the world. By your spirit, speak your word to us and give us your grace. Recognize the abundant signs of your care for us, so that we might be free to act in the world, courage and abandon. Let me call on Grant. Okay. Okay, the first reading is from Isaiah 5, verses 1 to 17. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stone and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. Expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judea, the judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or bowed, and it shall be overgrown with briar and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judea are as pleasant as in planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. And we call on Andrea. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if they were dry land. But when their Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, the half the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because they had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophets. Who through faith, comfort kingdoms, administer justice, obtain promises, shut the mouths of lions, quench raging fires, escape the age of sword, one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, 
with foreign island armies to fight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword, they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, through though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what there was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that claims so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfected of our faith, whom for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And a reading from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 to 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and one household will be divided, three against two and two against three, and they will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. When you see the south wind blowing, you say that there will be scorching heat and it happens. You Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but how do you know how to interpret the present time? Hear the wisdom told to us through the ages. something about that is there not Whoopi Goldberg dressed up as a nun what more could one ask for <laughs> many remember that delightful film uh, called Sister Act and then there was Sister Act 2 and I think maybe even Sister Act 3 but it was quite something was it not and when you think of what they were trying to do they were she was actually in security safety witness security dressed up as a nun and it was a halt was a Las Vegas delightful person singing and there she did what no one thought she could do she transformed and people listened to each other she thought this was a terrible place they thought she was an unusual person and somehow the walls broke down for them and all around her let us pray God we look to you so often we say why me Lord yet in that moment of why me we discovered the other words called, yes, of course. We are planted, we're growing, and something happening. In your name we pray, amen. 
It's a gift, is it not? We think of the image of vineyard. And some of us may never have had a vineyard on their property. And I think to ourselves that we are the vineyard where that vine that's growing. I remember growing up and we had vines in the backyard. We had Concord grapes and sometimes we'd make wine and sometimes we would eat them and sometimes we would eat them and sometimes we'd eat them and you were told not to eat them. But when you're a child and you're told not to do something, well, you sort of say, well, they're not here. Let's, let's eat them anyways. And there's something about that, is there not? About watching vines grow, we would trim it down. And I was amazed at how much it would spread and grow and discover in our very midst. It's as if we remember how the vines are pollinated. And it's as if there's, remember the bees and the bush, the bees that transform not only the, the vines, but also transform our lives with the honey they offer and the world we know. But we remember further still, there's something about this in this passage and you see this great image of a, of a vineyard and the word build a watchtower. Now we know a watchtower is for protection. We're reminded that yes, the, the vineyards needed protection because some people would come and steal and take away. And so build a watchtower, be aware. Build a watchtower over our hearts, build a watchtower over our lives, build a watchtower because we know in that moment as we hear in the passage, there's a love that is born, an intuition. It goes beyond words, goes beyond even understanding. Build that watchtower because as we hear in the passage that was read by Grant today, love is my song. It's that gift. And some people say, I don't know how to sing. I can't sing. But yet somehow we have a song to sing and a song to share then and now. As I hear each week with our wonderful stage coach, stage coach and they're, they're a smaller group than last session there's probably about 20 30 young people but you hear their songs and they're alive and they want to sing and make a difference and discover the gift in their lives of dance and song just like many of us sing as if no one's watching we dance as if no one's watching love is my song in the here and now but yet we know further still as andre was reading we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and so often we ask, who are the cloud of witnesses? Well, it's beyond the cemeteries that we visit sometimes. It's the trees. And it's interesting when we think of the, the land we live in called Canada, and so often we may look at the deciduous trees or pine trees, yet isn't it wonderful that the group of seven decades ago captured in their wonderful art, the scraggly pine trees, you know, the ones that look as if they're on their last leg but, and are windblown and it's sort of an almost skewed type of tree. When you see those in real life, you witness and wonder, there is beauty there as well. Sometimes those, those scraggly pine trees look as if a, a bonsai person has come along and trimmed them and there's no more full, full pine leaves or pine branches yet. Somehow we know that the same pine branches that look almost bare, the spruce branches, they provide shade, they provide homes and shelter. If you always debate about this, I always wonder when, when you're walking in the morning or walking anytime, the other part of the raccoon life is they run up trees. They somehow know to do this. And that's what they normally do. They normally don't stand off. But, and you think, who teaches the raccoons to run up the trees? Perhaps their mothers, but they somehow know how to do this thing, just like the squirrels, just like each of us. We learn how to flee when we need to, but run towards what we need to. And we're reminded of this gift in our moment of time, the gift of being together. And as we hear Jesus today say, I came to bring fire. And in that moment, we discover the divine silence. And the divine silence comes when we hear that first mo moment of the day or the end of the day, or that quiet moment in the city when we don't hear cars rushing around. Or perhaps it was last week when you heard about the barge. The crane went up and hit the, hit the tower with the hydro and there was five hours where downtown had no hydro. And you say to yourself, how does that happen? But we had silence in the city. Well, actually more rage, people were angry, but I can only imagine being caught in the, did anyone get caught in an elevator? No one here. But actually this area had power at the downtown, didn't it? But we're reminded so often of the need for silence in our lives the moment to be unplugged, the moment to discover the gift of the vine growing because we are that vineyard in the here and now.
We had that moment to reach out and discover, to build the watchtowers, to know that in this moment of time, we are not alone, to find that song being born, the people being surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. This past week, especially, as we heard about people at the edge, about of Jesus who came to bring fire, about us reminding ourselves that we are rising up with those clouds. That it's about, not about me, but it's about all of us. As we heard about the two tragedies of the Sikh person who was attacked in front of his home, about the other group, the Muslim people who were visiting in a cemetery where someone opened fire, about the young girl, four years old, on the tracks. And the TTC drivers knew to shut down the tracks and make a difference as she was rescued, unlike the other child. You say to yourself, what is happening that four-year-olds are by themselves? I don't know about you, when I was four years old, if I was not, if I was 30 seconds out of the sight of my parents, I was going to receive H-E-L-L, literally. But somehow, as a society, we remind ourselves we need to look at it. Perhaps parents are too stressed, but thank goodness the TTC drivers did. So if you see a child wandering about, don't be afraid to ask, where are your parents? It was a normal thing to do. Let's do it again and be people for each other. Because when we build that watchtower of care, of concern, it's about moving beyond where we are and discover that we have that good within us because the vineyard is about today about returning to that sense of hospitality where we, we can break bread and have coffee and have sandwiches together. I was wondered and marveled. I was watching online as the Rotary gathered at the National Club. And there was a person who has been involved with Spanish winemaking. And it was amazing to see what they do there. They're actually capturing techniques that go back centuries. Most of us, when we think of vineyard, we think of those lovely little neat rows that trap tractors can drive through, but actually what he showed was contemporary vineyards in Spain on mountainsides, where they look a bit like, like Christmas trees, where they, you have to have horses to plow the ground, which is what people used to have, because machines can't, they get stuck. And what you're reminded of is that that was a technique that was around for centuries and thousands of years, but we somehow lost sight of that. And a return to that is a return to helping all of nature planting where we didn't think we could and leaving the open area, the flatter ground for planting trees, hospitality and fertile ground, wetlands. But when we learn again from the ancient wisdom, we discover a portion and a bit of our, so just like we hear the words, the beloved planted the vineyard. The beloved planted that vineyard and once you grow, we we'll discover and something happened. The beloved plant something in our own lives and yet, there we look further about the person at the edge who discovered that God was breaking their lives, that we, when we look at what time it is, not just the, the time and the clock, but the age we're in, it's about looking at humanity, seeing the universe as if for the first time. How many people, when we think about it, are captivated by the James Webb telescope? Because we're thinking beyond our solar system. We're thinking beyond our galaxy. We're, we're seeing galaxies that are far away and knowing that we are part of this vast universe in the here and the now. So when we think of the macroverse, we also remember the, the microverse that happens within our hearts, in our lives, because we are that vineyard. We're ready to grow and risk again. That vineyard that starts with a sense of that building the tower, the love that is song, the gift of here and now, where we know that we are not alone in this moment of time as we celebrate something so new and so precious and so profound, as we see that there's a dynamic unity of being that vineyard, of being the people who build, of being the people who write songs, of being the people who are the vineyard that transforms and becomes that witness where fire is born inside you and I right now, of finding that song that is smoke to all of us gathered today. And it was wonderful this past week. It took a long time to plan. We, it was months ago, we started planning with our wonderful afternoon group of people in the United Church, Manor Road, United Church Women. And we've decided after a lot of deliberation, what, what shall we do? And we decided we're gonna go to the Mervis show. And we saw Harry Potter. And we gathered at the church 
and we navigated through the city. We drove down Mount Pleasant and met the narrowing of the road at Mount Pleasant and Jarvis. And then we were gonna travel on to Charles, but no, that road's blocked too. And then we, we, I think we, I think we, I can, we, I think we turned left, we went south and I said, okay, Susan Logie was the co-pilot in the other car. We're gonna turn right at Wellesley. No, we can't do that either. Keep going. And I think we turned right at Maitland. I sort of lose track of where we kept turning right. But I think we finally turned right at Maitland, but then we saw that south on Church Street, there was closed roads. Yes, surprise, Toronto. And then we made our way over to Young Street. And then we went south on Young Street, but guess what? The road narrowed one more time because they're expanding the platform at College Street. Six construction areas in this little downtown area. Finally, we had our way to Shooter, made a left turn and found our way to where we need to go. But thank goodness, pilot to co-pilot, and we navigated the urban expanse, the potholes and the construction areas of Toronto. Beware, beware. There's something about this, is there not? in this moment of time, because what we find we're planting is the gift of the wisdom that we share in the here and now, to build those watchtowers, to move beyond our isolation, discover again what it means to be community in the here and now, because the vineyard that's planted today is something so remarkable and so nuanced. It's about knowing as we build the watchtower that we are that vineyard planted inside ourselves that grows and nurtures are transformed. As Martin Luther King once said many years ago, I have a dream. I may not get there. But as I look over the other side, he said, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You see inside of us is a vine that's growing and shaping and transforming every day of our lives. When we but listen and learn again from each other, be the gift be the vine. The poem I, I came across this week is from the words of Prince Obed de la Cruz. It says, streams of water that give a drink for the fertile land, gushed from the scars of the un unblemished life's given best. And though Eden is burned under the, the grain of sand, this new garden, the vineyard, flourishes above the rest. Thanks be to God. Sure. 
for the great diversity you have created. Creator, we come to you with both the joys and the sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring for families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us, even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves, for the great diversity you have created in our world. We pray for those who suffer from discrimination because of their gender identity or sexual orientation or their skin color, who worry about their employment and who cannot find a job, for those who must hide who they are to find housing, for those who are not safe on our streets, for those who do not feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia, and all forms of discrimination and hate. Show us the way to make this world a better place for all. And we take this time now to receive our offering. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We trust, O oh God, in your provision and loving kindness. Do these gifts in our lives that we might bear your fruit with praise and thanksgiving. We ask this in the confidence of your mercy and love. <coughs> then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our very God. Gathered as your people, we offer the concerns of our life in the world, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the universal church and may discord among denominations yield the unity and a common commitment to share the good news of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, produce us to change in acts of vision and serve that further kingdom and honor the care that God has given us. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold authority in government, enable policymakers to enact justice, transforming places of violence and conflict into havens of respite and peace. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us. And the glory of God will be our real God. Before the Lord, whose name is near, wait for the Lord, be strong, dear heart. We pray for all those in our community who are suffering. The burden of illness, distress, or any kind of pain. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all those who have died and join the great cloud of witnesses in heaven. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Creator, 
You inspire us to trust in the things we cannot see and to ground our faith in your promises to us. Give us the clarity of your vision and make us ready to serve you as we await your return. And as a mother nurtures her children, let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today you see before you an artist painting a picture. And think of that as God, the great creator and author and, and painter. No. Each of us brings that gift, whether we take brush, or whether we take seed, or whether we take word of kindness and say, I am with you. You are never alone. In the name of God, Christ and spirit, amen. amen. song of gladness, peoples of the earth, Christ has come bringing peace, joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia, joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia, joy to every heart. 